Good morning, everyone. This is Katie Novotny calling in from Premier Marketing. Thank you very much for taking the time to join us today. Today we are we have Macy Leonard from Assurity Life to talk about some of the disability options we have, the the guides, and overall just a concept review of disability. So. We have seen so many people calling in for disability since the pandemic. I think that there's just kind of, it's on the top of people's mind, what happens if I would not have a paycheck? And what are, would be my options to protect that, to protect myself from that scenario in the future? So with that, we reached out to Assurity and Macy has graciously offered to walk us through this concept and opportunity for the next half hour. So with that being said, Macy, you ready to kick it off? I am. I am. Um, as soon as I get the option here, I will share my screen. But thanks so much for that introduction. I absolutely will just piggyback off of that. We have seen a ton um, of requests for disability income here, and especially just around the time of um, COVID. So this is something that we want to kind of go back through the basics and what is um, what is disability income and how do we have that conversations in a smart way with our um, with our clients? So, Katie, can you confirm real quick that you can see my screen? I'm actually yes, we gonna can. Try to Oops, it, wait, it removed itself now. Oh, there we go. It's there. Got it? All right, perfect. Well, um, so let's go ahead and get started. And I'm not sure what's happening with my computer. I apologize. <laughs> so today we're going to go through some, um, some the agenda. We're going to talk, talk, excuse me, about opportunities in the market. Give you some questions to ask your clients. Um, talk about features, facts, and uh, tools to help you sell, underwriting, and uh, tips for closing the sale. So opportunities in the market today. Um, and give me just one second. My computer seems to not be wanting to work. So, um, Katie, I apologize here. I need to restart this. There we go. Okay, hopefully you can see my screen. So, um, so opportunities in the market. Today, people are relying on their income, obviously, as Katie said. People are top, top of mind. You know, what happens if I'm ill or injured and can't make an income? And we know doctors, lawyers, executives, they may be considered uh, the go-to market for a lot of insurance sales, but there's a vast and underserved middle market out there that really want to protect their income, um, whether it be just protecting their uh, mortgage portion of their income uh, or maybe their entire income. Americans want that financial security today. We also know targeting middle-income America is going to be not only an easier opportunity, you're not going to be one in 50 agents that are targeting the same person. You're going to have an opportunity to work one-on-one -on -one with these clients um, in a volume-type sale, and here's a little bit more information on why. So 7 in 10 working Americans would feel a financial pinch in a month or less without a paycheck. So we know many Americans living month to month, paycheck to paycheck. Um, it's common sense, right? We all kind of know that. But if we dig into the facts, the reality is people just truly have those financial difficulties um, and they're not often realizing that there's actually a way to protect it or, or even realizing that that's their biggest asset. So if we stack up you know, a home and a car, um, the income, health, these are all very important factors to the client. But a lot of times the client's Put the other things like the home and the car and their health before they would put their income when in reality without that income how are they going to pay for any of those other main factors of their life we also know um, that people don't realize that disabilities are most often not considered short-term events so they think that they can get by with whatever group coverage they have through work um, or a short-term disability plan, but the fact is that the average disability lasts nearly three years. That's a long time for someone who can't go a month without a paycheck to go without a paycheck at all, okay? Even more eye-opening than that, 67% is, uh, of people in the workforce don't have any long-term disability. So they don't have any way to protect them, themselves against that average three-month disability term. So if a disability puts them out of work, if they're Ill, uh, Ill or injured and they can't make a paycheck, 
What are they going to do when their short-term disability stops paying? So those statistics should paint a very clear picture for you and if you use them with your client um, about the financial impact of a disability and how that could just wreak havoc on American families or individuals. So we, uh, again, are going to tackle middle income America or the middle market. And we're, that is working Americans age uh, about 25 to 55. Now, the product does allow you to write clients 18 to 60. But typically, our, our average age of a client is between the age of 25 and 55. There's uh, several different occupations, thousands of occupations, and great prospects within these niches, which we will go through. And, and these people are people that depend on their income. So a lot of times you're going to see that the average premium is a nice size premium. These people are making a little bit more than you probably think. Um, but these are also people who will be easy to have this conversation with because they know that without their income, they're not going to be able to make ends meet. So they're very interested in this coverage. So um, people you can start thinking about, teachers, realtors, nurses have been huge, contractors, um, chiropractors, police officers, and a lot more. The occupation itself doesn't matter as much as the client's dependence on their income. It still does matter what their occupation is to make sure that they're eligible. Um, but the ideal client also has dependents that also rely on their paycheck. Okay, so children in the home, uh, maybe even a spouse. They might be single, they might be married, um, they may or may not have children, but the odds of them wanting to protect their income when they have dependents definitely go up. So now that we know a little bit about who to target, I want to cover some best conversation um, objectives and questions to ask your clients to help show them that the need to protect their income is real. So feel free to write these down. Um, it, go ahead and put any questions that you have into that chat feature as well. We'll tackle those here at the end. Um, and then again, feel free to take screenshots. These are going to be really uh, amazing questions to start the conversation with prospects. So statistics can definitely be useful in starting the conversation with your clients, but questions we oftentimes see clients engaging more with, they understand it helps them think more about their particular situation versus just someone else in the world as part of a statistic, okay? So a couple uh, questions to get that conversation started. How much income would you need to support yourself and your family, I would throw in, if you could no longer work due to an illness or an accident? Now, we have tools available uh, that we can definitely get out to you. One is a fact finder sheet that goes through things like, how much um, credit card debt do you have to pay off each month? How much are you paying in auto insurance and student loans and, and your home mortgage? And all of these things added up, this is what you would need to cover all of your expenses. Um, we've got those tools available for you. If you're interested, feel free to reach out to Katie um, or I and we'll get that to you. Another question you can ask, how long could you go without a paycheck before it would become difficult to pay your bills? A lot of clients are gonna say, um, you know, 30 days, 60 days maybe, or maybe I can't wait at all. Um, now, just know that there are several options within a disability policy that we will cover um, to make sure that the client's needs are met. Some clients, though, when they answer this question, they may come back to you and say, well, I've got a retirement plan that I can withdraw from. Um, that immediately should be a red flag. So number one, we don't want to touch your retirement plan. Number two, there could be some tax consequences for withdrawing uh, retirement benefits early. So we really want to steer away from that. So, you know, client A, what else would you have uh, available to you? And they say, well, maybe I've got some money in the bank or I can call uh, my parents and they would loan me some money. Well, again, going back to the fact that this, these are, are really dire situations. If you've got money saved up as a nest egg to send your kids to college or, or you know, even asking that question, what else would you have used that, um, that money for in the bank? That we can protect that with a disability income policy and you can make sure that you still have those funds um, for that particular need. And then obviously, uh, loaning from family and friends is, is probably not always the best option. Last question I'll go through today would be, how would you afford to pay your mortgage if your paycheck stopped? So one alternative route to covering a client's entire income with a disability policy is just to cover the mortgage portion of it. So whether it's, you know, 1000 2500 of monthly benefit amount, um, that they would need 
and it's just to cover the mortgage to get that premium a little bit lower in a place they're a little bit more comfortable with, at least to start out with, we do see some agents taking that route, whether it's an initial upfront, you know, maybe you work with PNC and you're doing mortgage protection. Um, this is a cross sale for you. That would be a great opportunity. Or maybe you're starting the conversation with, here's a, an overview. Here's a big picture. Let's cover a hundred, you know, as much as we can of your income, which is generally about 60%. Uh, and if they come back with sticker shock, you kind of help them overcome objections. And if they still have sticker shock, you boil it down to, okay, well, let's protect your most needed asset like your mortgage. Okay. So that's another question to keep in mind. Now, the best questions here that you want to ask your clients as you're coming up with them are not yes or no answers. They're going to be questions that will help your client kind of develop stories, think about their situation and what it would be like without an income. So always, always listen to your clients and listen to their concerns. They may even bring up their own reason for getting in income protection as you're talking. So the main point here, again, use these questions to help steer your conversation. And when they realize how dependent they are on their paycheck, they'll know that they need to protect it. So today, most consumers are doing research online before meeting with you, as you probably already know. So being able to show your product knowledge and then personalizing it to the situation and the needs of each client is really important. Um, so it's going to show that your value and uh, help you gain further trust with them. So we're going to look at some key features of the disability policy with Assurity. And what we have here, it's called our Century Plus Disability Income Product. Now this is traditionally, <clears throat> excuse me, a fully underwritten product, but we've got some very high non-med limits. So starting at the top here though, Monthly benefit amounts range from $500 to $20,000 of monthly benefit amount. And again, covering about 60% of a client's income. Issue ages are 18 to 60. We do base that off of nearest age, nearest birthday. We do not require labs or exam for ages 18 to 50 up to $5,000 of monthly benefit amount. That is for a W-2 employee. Um, for 1099 and self-employed, we uh, actually, I'm sorry, this would be for everyone. The no income verification is for W-2 employees up to 4,000 a monthly benefit amount. And then 1099 or self-employed up to 2,500 a monthly benefit amount would not require income verification. So for any client ages 18 to 50, no labs or exam up to $5,000 of monthly benefit amount. So all in all, this is going to be a very simple policy for you to write in most cases. Um, we do include a two-year own occupation, true own occupation definition, which is the best definition of disability that you can get on a policy. Essentially, it's the easiest way for someone to be able to get a claim. If you have questions on the def definitions of dis disability, write it into the chat feature and we can, can tackle that um, here at the end of the presentation. Now, we do have optional riders as well that can enhance the coverage for the client. It can also enhance your commission as the agent since they are for cost. But it's a very, very customizable product to make sure the client's needs, wants, and desires are all um, figured out. So with our product, you can also offer your qualified business owners access to special events or special benefits, I should say. Um, business owners will be eligible for an income enhancement. So we know a lot of small business owners, when they take their paycheck home, a lot of times they're putting a majority of that or at least some portion of that back into their business. So what we do is as long as they own 10% of the business, we're going to add 20% to their uh, income amount that they give us. And then that is going to give us uh, the opportunity to offer a larger monthly benefit amount to them, which can help offset for, you know, like we said, putting that money back into the business or even writing down for tax income purposes. Another benefit we offer is an occupation class upgrade. So we do uh, look at occupation and what your client does for a living for disability income because it tells us essentially how dangerous their job is. So a construction worker is gonna be rated a little bit differently than a real estate agent, for example. Um, all covered el eligible occupations, just one thing that we look in underwriting and one good question to ask your client when you're meeting with them. But as long as your client has been in business for two years or more, and that they make at least 30,000 of annual income, we're gonna take their occupation class and upgrade it, which gives them a smaller monthly premium. 
Okay, so that's a big benefit for some, some small business owners. The last portion here is a discount option. If you are meeting with a small business owner or an employee of a, an organization that maybe has between 15, I would say five and 15 employees, or even down to two or uh, one or two or three, it would be a great idea for you to ask to speak with the other employees or the, the business owner and offer um, some solutions for income protection because if we get three or more policies under a common employer, we're going to take 15% off of everyone's premium, and then everyone can continue their policies at the discounted rate if anyone leaves the group. So it's a great way to um, segue yourself into an a larger opportunity, help everyone get a little bit of a discount. Um, now, everyone can pay individually for their policies, or we can do list bills, totally up to the um, business owner and you to decide, but that is another benefit that we offer for small business owners. And one other one that's not listed on the screen, but I do want to mention, we have a standalone business overhead expense plan. So this is going to cover things like employee salaries, rent, and electricity, anything that is uh, required to keep that business up and running while the owner is disabled. And uh, that is another opportunity for you to increase that sale and the protection for the client. All right, so we know a little bit about that product now. I do want to go through some sales scenarios and um, a fact finder with you to take you through the process of what um, quoting someone and presenting an option back might look like. So we're going to talk about Stacy, who is 36. We're going to say she is married and she's making about 76000 a year as a realtor. So we're going to say Stacy thought that her finances were in great shape until she realized the difficulties her and her husband would have without their paycheck. So step one of the fact finder, again, we have this in a PDF format that we can get to you, but uh, we are going to find out Stacy's three biggest expenses each month, and they total about 3000 So mortgage or rent, $19.50 a month. Her car payment is $5.50 a month, and her student loans are $3.50 a month, totaling $28.50 each and every month. Step two, we're going to break down Stacy's monthly salary, which is about $6,300 a month. Her agent, or you, recommend covering her, um, her salary or her income by 60%, which is generally the maximum that a disability carrier can offer. And that's well within the typical range of costing between 1% to 3% of um, her salary. So we look at uh, 63.33 as the uh, income amount protected times point, uh, uh, excuse me, point 0.6. So then the solution portion of this, we're going to talk about ways to protect her income. Her first option is going to be a comprehensive coverage. She qualifies for that monthly benefit amount of $3,800 over five years. So $3,800 a month, and she would choose a five-year benefit period is what that is. Um, and the benefit period, folks, is going to be how long a surety will continue to pay a claim to your client as long as they are disabled, unable to go to their um, true own occupation. And then just know that the policy itself is guaranteed renewable to age 65. So they can technically claim multiple times on this product as long as they continue to pay premiums. We also included here in these um, quotes uh, a 90-day elimination period. And an elimination period is a wait period. So the client, once they make a claim, they do have to remain disabled or unable to go to their job for their entire elimination period to be eligible for these benefits. One thing I will say is that benefits are paid in rear. So if you're choosing a 30-day elimination period, your client technically has to be um, disabled for those 30 days. And then once they are, once they meet that requirement, a surety will make the payment at the end of the following month. So when I say that, I mean talk to your clients truly how long can they get, uh, can they move forward without an income? Because if it's if it's 30 days, um, you want to make sure you do the shortest elimination period because they're technically going to wait 60 days before they get that check. So take whatever uh, elimination period they're looking at, add 30 days to it, um, and make sure that you're, you're giving them the best options there. So anyway, looking at this uh, opportunity, a 90-day, five-year, 3,800 monthly benefit amount would cost her $73.38 a month. Now, second option would be Stacy could consider just protecting her mortgage. 
So disability income for mortgage protection is an affordable, more affordable option like we were talking about earlier. Um, and that would be $1,950 a month, $1,950 of monthly benefit amount. Again, we did a 90-day wait period or elimination period and a five-year benefit period, which cost her $32.45 a month. So I do recommend starting out with the full comprehensive benefits. The, the most that you can protect um, them would be obviously the best situation. And then overcome objections from there. You know, a lot of times this is going to be less expensive than going through the Starbucks line every morning. Um, or can you pack a lunch from home, uh, you know, a couple times a week versus eating out? And that would cover this and make sure that you don't have to go through financial hardships if you can't go to work. And then if the client still has um, difficulties overcoming the financial portion of this, transition to a mortgage protection only product or um, opportunity to same product. So we just talked through the bulk of what we're presenting today, but I do have a very important section that I want you to know about, which is tools to help you sell. You've got available to you right away. Um, we've got flyers, we've got uh, a lot of different information on our site, but one that uh, is something that's near and dear to my heart is our social media kit. If you are looking for prospects on social media, mortgage protection is a really great one um, to search for with people per, uh, posting that they're buying a new home, for example. Uh, that would be a great one to use your social media for. But we do have a disability income insurance social media kit with already pre-made uh, disability income posts that you can just copy and paste into your social platform, be it Facebook, Instagram, whatever you use. So uh, go ahead and ask us for that if that's something that you're interested in. Other tools available, assurity.com slash disability dash income dash insurance. We've got some Spanish materials and English materials. Um, we've got brochures on our product in general. We've got a brochure for small business owners, brochure for mortgage protection only, um, and, and several other um, opportunities such as that fact finder. So when you're getting quotes and how do you run rates, would be another question that we see come through a lot. We've got several options for you. You can go to myquote.assurity.com and select the disability income option. It's on that screen right there if you want to type it into your cell phone uh, or your laptop or desktop computer. This is going to be quick quotes. Note that this is not going to give you all of the options for riders, benefit amounts, or even elimination and benefit periods. This is simply meant to get quick numbers. If you have questions, want to reach out to Premier uh, for a more comprehensive quote, or even if you're contracted with Assurity and want to go to our site, um, AssureLink, to be able to use the full illustration software, you absolutely have the opportunity to do that too. And just let us know if you have any questions on how to get there. But I want to wrap this up talking about underwriting, which is actually a very exciting portion of this product which is very rare to say as a salesperson, I know, uh, but even you as the agent, I think you'll begin to see why this is a good thing for your clients as we move forward. So there are three main um, factors that I want you to get out of your conversations with the client in order to get a quote. The first one would be occupation. What do you do for a living and what do you do on a daily basis? So if you're in construction, are you supervisory duties only? Are you on-site supervisory duties? Or are you doing manual labor? Would just be an example of what are you doing in your daily job? Get as nitty gritty as you can. We also need to know their income. Whether it's a monthly or annual basis, we need to know what is the client making each year. Um, for business owners, 1099s, we definitely, or we, most of the time, we're gonna take an average of the last two years to factor what we can offer. And then any medical history. So if you know of any medical conditions that the client has, that's gonna help us determine uh, what product we can offer because we do have a graded benefit disability income product. It's very rare in the market. Um, it was repriced just a couple years ago, and this is essentially a, a transition option for your clients as a uh, medical decline. So if your client is a medical decline from our regular product, we're automatically relooking at that client with the same application for our graded benefit disability plan, which is a little bit more expensive um, than what the Century Plus would be, but makes sense, right? We're taking on a greater medical risk client there. It is an opportunity, it is a safety net, and it's an easy solution for you to still get paid and get that client some coverage. So let's take a look at some examples for underwriting. Uh, for occupation specifically, your client's monthly benefit amount and premium are based on their occupation class, which is why it's so important that we get as much detail as we can on what they do. So we do use their job duties and not just their title to classify. 
Um, so 1A occupation is going to be someone that would be involved in heavy manual labor or work. Um, some good examples we typically see, construction laborer, custodians, exterminators, roofers, and um, truck drivers. Now, truck drivers could be a second occupation class, a 2A, which is going to be more skilled and manual. Um, so it could be a short haul truck driver, carpenters, chefs, electricians, farmers, and landscapers. 3A is going to be professionals or office type occupations with certain activities or hazards that involve laboratory, technical, supervisory, or service work. So 3A occupation classes would be daycare workers, graphic artists, physical therapists, hospital and surgical nurses, for example. And then a 4A, which by the way, you don't need to memorize all this. I'm just giving you some examples here um, to help you also think about other clients you can reach out to. We do have this in a guide format on the website. But a 4A is our top occupation class, lowest premiums, and those are gonna be office type duties, um, rarely exposed to any hazards. So accountants, uh, real estate agents, architects, clinical nurses, pharmacists, and I'm gonna throw this one out, insurance agents. If you don't have income protection on yourself, that's the best place to start. So good tip for you, if you can't decide between two occupation classes, pick the lower class, make the sale, and during underwriting, if we can offer a better class, we will. For income protection and, uh, excuse me, for income and financial background information, disability covers, like I said, about 60% of your client's income. There has to be a little incentive for the client to return to work once they're able to. If we need income verification, we'll ask for it. But again, it's generally that 4,000 for a W-2 or below um, does not require any. And then 2,500 of monthly benefit amount and below for a 1099 or self-employed individual does not require any. Um, but we would sometimes for those amounts above, we'll ask for things like tax returns or other common forms of documentation. So to make this process a little bit easier, complete the one step. Um, you can do a drop ticket or you can do our full e-application. And then uh, we also have a check sheet, uh, a check sheet that you can use to make sure everything is checked off that you need prior to submitting. Medical history, we need you to um, give us as much detail as possible. No labs or exam for $5,000, 18 to 50 uh, for ages and below. Uh, so just make sure that you're noting any medical history for the client. But I want to end today's presentation giving you a couple tips for closing the sale. One, over, or one um, way to overcome the objection of I don't think I'll ever use it is asking questions. So do you have any medical insurance or do you ever plan to use it? Did you know that there's an optional rider you can get that returns premium if you don't use the insurance? That's a big one. How would you feel if you needed disability income but, wouldn't, but didn't have it? And then did you know that most um, disabilities are caused by illnesses, not injuries? That's about 90% of disabilities caused by illnesses versus injuries. So when your client's thinking of becoming disabled due to like a car accident, for example, um, that is an easy way to overcome that, that objection. Clients oftentimes say it's too expensive, okay? Well, think about it in these ways. If an injury sets you back from your career and you no longer have an income, how expensive is it gonna be then? You pay for insurance to protect your pets, your luggage, even your cell phone. Why would you not protect the thing that's paying for everything else? Why do you pay for medical insurance? This will get them thinking, okay, well, because I want to make sure that I'm financially protected in case something medically happens. Well, in case something happens to your income, let's make sure you're financially protected as well. How expensive would it be for you to pay your, for your treatment and make up for lost wages out of pocket, out of your savings without an income? And then did you know that this um, plan has an optional return of premium rider? Again, we went through that. They can get their money back if they don't use it. So last slide uh, here, I have disability income insurance through work. Well, did you know that the ins and outs of your group policy, for example, the elimination and benefit periods might not cover uh, as long as you're disabled. They might not be transferable. They might only be on duty um, coverage benefits. Is your monthly benefit amount enough to, to cover your needs? Um, typically, it's a smaller portion than what we could offer on an individual basis. Are your benefits portable? And then did you know that uh, your coverage applies outside of the workplace? So those are some easy ways to overcome some objections. I know we're right at time here. Uh, so I want to just take the next couple minutes and see, Katie, do we have any questions that came through the chat feature that we can tackle at this point in time? We sure do. 
A oh, couple things. Awesome. Is number one is for small business owners. Is the thirty thousand dollar mark is that gross or net? Uh, good question. That is going to be uh, gross. Another I'm going to double check that. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm going to double check okay. that and make sure. Okay. The next one is regarding the elimination period. If you can claim on this policy multiple times, is it a one-time elimination period or is it per occurrence? Um, so it is, good question, it's going to be per occurrence, and that's for the elimination and the benefit period. So if they're on, on claim, which by the way, we automatically include waiver of premium while they're on claim. So if they're on claim, they go back to work, they start paying their premiums again, and they become disabled again, their elimination period and benefit period would start over. Great. Another one is, does this plan coordinate with Social Security? Good question. It may and it may not. It all depends on how you structure the policy. We do have an optional rider. It's called a supplemental disability income rider. When you add that, it actually lowers the premium on the policy for the client. Essentially, a surety is looking at that saying we may or may not have to pay the full benefit amounts if there's a claim. Um, so if you add that, yes, that portion, which generally 1800 of monthly benefit amount is the max that we can put in there would offset with Social Security benefits that would be paid. If you opt for putting all of the benefit with the surety and not including that supplemental disability income rider, then no, it would not offset with Social Security. Great. Um, another one that's come in is, do you consider military or service? So Good question. Generally, yeah, so generally not military. If if you're talking services like police officers, other government employees, then yes. Um, but active duty military personnel um, generally is, is no. Perfect. Well, Macy, I think we handled all the questions. I so appreciate all this information. And um, I appreciate everyone out there for taking the time to join us. This is uh, a hot topic in the uh, Hopefully this shed some light. I know it did even for a few of us here in the room at Premier. So if there is anything that comes up beyond that, please feel free to give us a call here at Premier. If we don't know the answer, I am sure that Macy would be more than happy to get on the phone with all of us and take care of anything. So with Absolutely. that, I appreciate everybody's Absolutely. time. Thank you again, Macy. Hey, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Take care. Bye, guys.